Coming up, use the power of the sun to charge your phone. Unless you have this phone, which could go for days. And we'll show you how to record and take pictures with your iPhone. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by Stamps.com. Buy and print official U.S. postage for any letter or package with your own computer and printer. For a $110 bonus offer, including $55 free postage, visit Stamps.com and use the offer code Before You Buy. And welcome to Before You Buy, the show uh, on Twit where we get the Twit staff, they're wonderful people, to review products, brand new stuff from all over the map. Everything from cell phones to TVs to microphones. In fact, we've got uh, a cell phone today, right now. In fact, Motorola and uh, Verizon say is the longest lasting razor ever. Jason Howell has a look at the Razer Max. Hey, what's up? I'm Jason Howell with Twit.tv, and I am here with the Motorola Droid Razer Max. This is the next model of the Droid Razer, and it has one key differentiating feature between that and the Motorola Droid Razer that I actually reviewed with Before You Buy a few months ago. So first of all, let's take a look at the things that are very similar between these two phones. As with the Motorola Droid Razer, it's super lightweight, it has a very light feel to it, and a thin profile. Putting it up against the original Droid Razer, you can see a very slight difference between the two. A little bit thicker, because that's making room for the battery, it doesn't narrow out right there. It has a big 4.3 inch screen, it's a Super AMOLED QHD 540 by 960 display, and it's very bright in bright sunlight. Although I will say it's the Pentile technology, which essentially means it has some pixel sharing going on. So little fine text like you might see up in the top there is going to look a little jagged if you look close enough. Performance when you're playing games and running apps themselves is actually pretty fast. What slows it down is Moto Blur, and if I hit apps to jump to the main app drawer, you kind of see how long it takes to really jump between the two. If I hit home, it's almost a second of a lag to really get to the places that you want. And that's kind of disappointing. Moto Blur kind of seems to slow things down. Camera performance is excellent, as was with the original Droid Razor. Once you actually focus on an item, then you can take your pictures pretty rapidly. And that's always what I'm looking for. Autofocus and then snap away, that's the trick. Good light takes excellent shots. Low light, not so hot. But as you can see here, well, these are some pretty moderately lit things as well as a really well lit picture outside and when you blow these up on a normal screen it actually looks pretty good front facing camera is actually pretty impressive as well hey there's our camera person jeff stewart hi jeff front facing camera is pretty awesome i actually had a lot of fun with the front facing camera and calls, of course, because this is a phone, were loud and clear, same as they were with the Droid Razor. One downside here is that this is gingerbread, not ice cream sandwich. And currently, Motorola doesn't have a firm date on when they're going to roll out an ice cream sandwich update to the Motorola Droid Razor Max, so keep that in mind. All right, now let's take a look at what's actually different with the Droid Razor Max. It has one key differentiating feature, as I said earlier, and it's the battery. The battery on the Motorola Droid Razor Max is incredibly impressive. It's a 3300 milliamp hour battery. It's still non-removable, as was with the Droid Razor, so this back compartment doesn't come off, but thankfully 3300 milliamp hours is plenty to power this LTE device. I commonly got one and a half days out of a full charge, and that's with a combination of 3G, 4G, and Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, not to mention I'm syncing Twitter, Facebook, Path, as well as three Gmail accounts, so I'm doing a lot of syncing in the background. The battery currently is charged up at 90%, but what I 
often saw was that the display took anywhere between 20 to 25 percent of that battery consumption and that's actually less than i'm used to seeing sometimes it's upwards of 40 to 50 percent of your total battery consumption is the display alone and that's thanks to the super amoled technology that lowers the battery consumption on top of that motorola has included something that i love and loved on the original droid razor which is smart actions which actually allows you to create profiles for saving your battery in other places. So low battery saver, when it detects in this case that it's less than 25% and it's not charging, it sets a lower display brightness, turns GPS off. You can pretty much program this to do anything that you want for the most part within the confines of the software. Uh, and it also gives you suggestions on different things that you can do, like setting up a profile for the meeting that you might have at work or saving your battery at nighttime. And that's smart actions. It really helps to get even a few more hours of battery life out of your Motorola Droid Razor Max. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the pros of the Droid Razor Max. It has one of the best stock batteries on the market. Impressive camera performance in good light, but still I was very happy with the camera. And it's a solid build quality. It just feels nice to have this phone in your hands. Now the cons. The display can be fuzzy. And that's thanks to the Pentile technology. Moto Blur, yet again, rears its ugly head and slows things down, and it has a lot of bloatware. Uh, and Gingerbread, with no ice cream sandwich in the near-term future, the Motorola says it's coming sometime soon. Overall, I absolutely recommend the Droid Razor Max as a buy. The battery is top-notch and can't be beat by any other phone on the market right now without putting in your own extended battery, especially with the LTE connectivity uh, in combination, this is just a top-notch phone. Uh, check out my reviews on another show I do on the Twit Network, All About Android, twit.tv slash AAA. Otherwise, thank you for watching my review of the Droid Razor Max. Thank you, Jason. Of course, remember that uh, Google has received approval to take over uh, Motorola. So this may be the last Motorola phone that's not a true Google phone. Next, I as Actar takes a look at this. When I first saw it, I thought, I no idea what that is. The uh, name doesn't help much either. It's called The Peel. Ayaz, you better explain. I'm Ayaz Actor, and today we're reviewing The Peel. It's a remote control system that works with an iOS or Android device. And there are three parts to this. There's a part that sits on your network. There's this part, which is the Peel Fruit, which is an IR blaster. And, of course, the application, which makes everything work. So we're going to just set this up in our network right now. Let's uh, attach this to a connection. We just happen to have network ports right here. Now this is the peel cable, this goes into your network. First you plug in one side, here's a plug here. You see the blue light, that means it's not getting an IP address. Well, it's not attached. Let's put it to our network. You'll see that blue change to green, it means it gets an IP address, which means it's ready to communicate with the peel fruit. Next we have to pair the network device with the peel fruit itself, and we do that via the iOS application. For channel guide data, you have to put in your zip code. Okay, and we have DirecTV here, and we'll skip this step. You can get a Peel account so you can get recommendations for programming. That's very helpful. All right, so we're going to go to the remote control, set up my Peel smart remote. Peel cable is plugged into the network. Now we actually have to take a look at the Peel fruit. We're going to open this up. There's an included C cell battery. You're going to pair it up with a five-digit code right here. So we're going to do is put that number into our device. Once you've done that, you can just close up the peel fruit. This is purely cosmetic, this piece on top, but it does make it look unique. It has a flat bottom this side. It looks like a round ball, but you just need to set it up. Point it towards your television or your set-top box, whatever you have back there. Next, keep going to the application. Hit next. Choose your television. They give you the most popular televisions over here, but we have a Vizio. We'll go find that. Okay, so we got that. It was code 2 of 18. Now, granted, if you, if you had your input set to somewhere like number 18, you'd have to cycle through every one of those options to get there. Again, there is no way to directly tell the application, hey, I know it's on HDMI 1. So we hit done. And we tell it, what kind of set-top box do we have? Direct TV. And I can click next channel right now. We're going to take a look at the television channel changes. Yes, it does. That's correct. Did, and I ask you the question, did your set-top box change to the next channel? Yes, it did. So now our setup is complete. Okay, so here's the setup. Here's the application. Again, you want to find what's on television right now? Let's go ahead and see. 
We're going to say TV shows. Let's watch Dr. Phil. We need to get healthy mentally, apparently, and we want to watch some crazy people. You can click Watch on Television right there. And we have an error message, but the channel did change. So I'm not sure why there's an error message. And there's Dr. Phil. Now, notice something. You don't need to know what channel it's on. You don't need to know uh, pretty much anything. You just need to know what show you want to watch, and there you go. If I want to increase the volume, I just slide this thing up or down. Now, notice this remote is not a universal remote kind of substitute. This is a very limited style remote. This is really about finding content. If I want to watch more television shows, let's go do that. Let's go to, let's go watch some something else. I'm sick of crazy people. Let's watch, let's watch some ESPN. So I love sports. And there you go. Scott Van Pelt show is on. It worked no problem. Channel has changed. And again, I don't know what channel ESPN is on. I don't care because this thing shows me that. Here are the pros about the peel. It's really simple. Very simple to use. The hardware is very simple. Uh, it's well thought out because this device is communicating with the device on the network, the peel cable itself. This doesn't eat up battery life. You get a battery indicator on the application itself, which is pretty handy. So you can see what's going on with the peel. Hardware is pretty nice. It's unique. And it actually looks like it belongs in your coffee table. So that's a nice thing. Again, the thing on the network is plugged in, so you don't have to worry about battery life too often. Very easy to use application, easy to find content. Also, you can do searches on the application. So if you're looking for a channel or a show, you can find it right there. On the con side, it didn't, the peel itself didn't find every component I had, unfortunately. And when you have options for a streaming box, it only offers you Apple TV or the Roku. If you have any other kind of box, it's not easily findable in the application. Additionally, the hardware, while I do like this battery-powered option here, it would have been nice if they had an AC adapter. Maybe I want to put this in the cabinet. Maybe an IR blaster so I could put a little tail in there. Because all my components at home, by the way, are in a cabinet. Maybe you have a different setup. I would have liked to have that option for myself. Again, these are small quibbles. Hardware solid, but on the con side, it could do more. Application being a bit crashy, not something you want in a remote control. If you want to control your television, that's not good enough. On top of that, this is not a universal remote substitute, okay? You have a very limited selection of what you can control. You can get to your menu system in your direct TV box. You can get to your volume and, and maybe change channels. But you can't do a whole lot of other things. This is not going to replace a Harmony by any stretch of the imagination. That's why the Peel is really a remote control solution, not a universal remote control solution. I'm going to give this a try. If you are not a cord cutter and you have hundreds of channels and you have no idea where anything is, this is definitely a try. That's been the Peel Remote Control System. I'm Ayaz Akhtar, and I am going to watch The Price is Right, because I love that show. It's like I'm in college again. Coming up in just a moment, Tony Wang will take a look at a solar charger. Is it enough to keep your devices running? And uh, we're going to hear from Jason Howell about a battery-powered uh, backpack. Before we do that, though, whoa, you've seen this before, right? This is... The Stamps.com stick scale. It's time to talk about Stamps.com. Stamps.com puts the post office uh, on your desk. You never have to go to the post office again. And with post offices closing, the cost of stamps going up, you know the last thing you want to do if you're a small business is to spend time in line at the post office. Time is money. That's why I use Stamps.com and I Love it. I've been using it for years. I want you to take a look at it. We've got a special no-risk trial. I'll tell you about it in a moment. So the idea of Stamps.com is using the Stamps.com software on Windows or even the Stamps.com website on the Mac, you can print uh, your own, buy and print your own U.S. postage from Stamps.com. Everything from a letter to a package. Uh, the beauty uh, part is, is after you, you've weighed it on the scale so you know exactly how much it weighs, you've printed the exact right postage, the mail carrier picks it up. You never have to go to the post office. They'll even schedule free pickups on your schedule. It's great for an Amazon seller or an eBay seller. And if you're shipping internationally, Stamps.com will automatically fill out the international forms. Uh, they even give you discounts you just can't get at the post office. Now, here's the special deal. Visit Stamps.com right now. And now you see that special offer, $80. Forget that. Don't know. Don't know. Don't click that. Go right up above to the radio microphone. Click that. And use the offer code before you buy, and guess what's going to happen? You're going to get a $110 bonus offer, a no-risk trial, including the digital scale I just showed you, and 
$55 free postage. Do not accept an offer from anyone else. Make sure you see my smiling face on the Stamps.com site. This is a great deal. $55 free postage. Go to Stamps.com. Before you do anything else, click that radio microphone and enter the offer code before you buy. All one word, before you buy. And uh, that $110 no-risk trial is yours. And I think you're going to like it. Stamps.com. We really appreciate Stamps and their support of Before You Buy. And frankly, uh, I would do these ads even if they didn't support Before You Buy because it's a great service. You're going to love it. All right, time for a couple of shorties. What we do here is uh, we do longer reviews, but we only give you a little snippet of the review, and you can see the full thing uh, at YouTube. Uh, let's kick things off with an eye chart. No, it's not an eye chart. It's, a, it's actually a solar panel. Tony Wang tried it out. This is Tony for Twitter TV, and today I'm here with Greg helping me reviewing this portable charging system called the Changers because we're making changes. It is a solar power system that charges to a 4400 milliamp portable battery with really cool design and the, de the name of this device is the Kahuhumi and the name of the solar panel is Maroshi. As you can see, this device only has one button and it shows you uh, the amount of charge you have currently. There is four indicator lights and on the bottom of the unit you have sun in and that's where you plug in your uh, solar panel. And you have a data out and you have a power out. Power out is obviously for USB devices and the data out is actually for hooking up the battery to your computer. So you're probably wondering why a portable charging device, a, a battery like this, needs to have a data out. And it's because if you go to thechangers.com, they're actually trying to build a community of users of this device. And you can upload all your usage data, uh, how much you're charging, and how much you're using the battery, and it keeps track of your usage. Buy, try, or don't buy, I can't recommend this just because of the price. It is really pricey at over $100. But the concept is really great to build a community around something like this. And the solar panel is partially made out of recycled materials, so they are trying to be greener than all the other charging solutions. I'm Tony for Twit.tv, and this is The Changers. Hey, what's up? I'm Jason Howell with Twit.tv, and I'm here with the power bag by Fuel. It's not your normal everyday backpack. This is actually the business class pack that Power Bag sells. Let's go ahead and get into this pouch right here to start off with. You can see I have my Samsung Galaxy Tab in there and it's actually plugged in because the Power Bag is a backpack with a built-in battery. It actually has a 6,000 milliamp hour battery included. This battery right here can charge a basic smartphone up to four times, or it can charge up to four separate devices if that's what you need. You can have them all plugged in simultaneously. I'm using the 2.1 amp USB port, so it charges things like iPad, Kindle, obviously a Samsung Galaxy Tab, faster than a normal basic charging USB port will. But if I go into this very front pouch right here, show you there's even more stuff built in. No, it doesn't come with a Droid Razor Max, but it does have a micro and a mini USB cords built right into the bag so you can just plug in your devices right there and put them in the pocket. It also has the standard Apple connector so that you can connect your iPhone in this pouch as well. So let's get to the pros. It charges multiple devices at once, very cool. It's very light considering the fact that a battery is buried inside. Comfortable and extremely well built. And finally, the many compartments are tailored to fit all types of technology. So if you're a tech geek, you're going to find a pocket for it. Now the cons. There is no laptop charging capabilities. The battery isn't powerful enough for that. It's kind of too bad. The price is a tad steep at $180. And it's just one more thing to remember to charge at night. Overall, I actually really like the power bag and I would absolutely recommend it as a buy. It is a little expensive, but considering all of the technology that you can throw inside it and have it charged up without thinking about it, it's perfect. It's actually perfect for me because I review a lot of Android gadgets on All About Android on the Twit Network. This being the Droid Razor Max, which has a huge battery, and this thing was able to charge it pretty quickly. So check that out on twit.tv. Otherwise, I'm Jason Howell with twit.tv. Thank you for watching my review of the power bag. I have to say, I, got a, I also got uh, one of those backpacks at, uh, at uh, CES, and I love it. 
I love the idea I could just charge my phone and carry it in a backpack. It doesn't add a whole lot of weight. All right. It's time for uh, me to do a review, isn't it? So this is something that um, I've been looking for for a long time. I use my iPhone, I mean, to to uh, to blog. It has, it's a great HD uh, movie camera, especially the new iPhone 4S with 8 megapixels. It's also um, really good for doing audio uh, blog entries. I use a service called AudioBoo to do that. And I even... I even blogged via audio uh, from China when I was there a couple of years ago. It worked great, just talking into the phone. But I thought there must be some some better way to do this, some some better microphone. And I have been trying microphones like crazy. $20 microphones, $5 microphones. None of them really sounded any better than the built-in mic on the iPhone. It's actually pretty good. Until I came across this. This is the Apogee. It's actually a USB mic. And I'll show you a few things I, I really like about it, and I'll show you a couple of things I don't. First of all, it has a thread on the bottom for a tripod. So you can uh, screw in a tripod like this, and uh, it acts like a microphone. Actually, it's not on the bottom there. It's on this side here. It acts like a microphone uh, stand. Um, this is a side-loading microphone, a condenser mic, and so it's very, um, very sensitive. So... This is a proprietary connector that goes into the cable that comes with it. And on the other end, there you go. Now it's a USB cable. So you can use it as a traditional USB mic going into your computer. And it also comes with a cable with a 30-pin connector on it suitable for the iPhone and the iPad. Now, there's a reason why you might want to use a microphone with one of these 30-pin cables. And that's because... The uh, newer uh, iPhones and iPads don't have analog input in. The only way to get analog microphones in there is to use the mini jack. So having 30-pin means I'm going to be able to use this digitally and record right to the iPhone. Uh, it then shows up as just a standard uh, audio input on the microphone. I'll show you. I'll launch the um, uh, recorder, the voice recorder app that Apple provides on here. And uh, you can see what it looks like. So I... I plug it in, and I'm running the uh, little voice recorder app from uh, from uh, Apple. And uh, you'll see the VU meter. And you can adjust the microphone, the Apogee mic, with this gain on the side. And, and make sure you do that because you notice this red light here. We don't, want to, we don't want it to get into the red. We just want it to stay in the green. That's how you know it's not clipping. And actually, even though I'm not very close to the mic, it gives you a good level. That's actually a good thing because the mic pops if you get too close. It's pretty sensitive to plosives from the P's and the T's. So you probably do want to sit about a foot away uh, from this microphone. Picks up, uh, it's fairly directional, picks up a good sound. Uh, I love the quality of it. In fact, uh, we'll play, here's a recording uh, I did uh, that I posted on my blog um, of me pumping up my ball in my office. You can listen uh, to the audio quality of this. That sound is uh, actually the pumping <laughs> of my ball, the ball I sit on. It picked I'm, up that, the, the mic was on my desk and it picked up the sounds of the of the pump and everything quite well, but you did hear a little popping uh, in there. There's another negative. Uh, it doesn't have an audio jack on the microphone. A lot of USB mics do have audio jacks on the microphone, so you can monitor in real time. The problem is you can't really monitor through the iPhone. There's enough delay that it'll really kind of confuse you. So if you're recording your own voice, it's, it's probably not a good solution. Uh, however, I found that the audio was good enough that I didn't feel like I had to monitor it. Look how nice it looks, especially on the, uh, the tripod as it comes with. It also comes with a, another adapter that you can use uh, to put this on a standard mic stand. It's got the wide threads. Um, I think it's good enough to use for uh, broadcast applications. I think it's actually quite a good microphone, and it ought to be because it's $200. It's uh, pretty darn pricey. No batteries necessary. It's powered via the USB uh, connector. Uh, works with a computer, iPhone, or iPad. It's from Apogee, and it's called the mic. Now, that's a microphone, but remember I also said I'd like to shoot video and take pictures. The iPro lens. Would you believe there's a lens in here? Well, there is. The iPro lens comes with this uh, plastic case. It's kind of a cheesy case, but the, the, it fits an iPhone a 4 or 4S. just snaps in like that. It has a couple of advantages. One is it's threaded on both sides. Those threads fit into this handle, this little handle that it comes with. So I can screw this in here like this. 
And then uh, this handle will go into a tripod. So uh, if you have a, a tripod, you can just screw this into the bottom of the tripod, and uh, you can uh, you can turn this into a full like movie kit, which is pretty cool. But wait, you say, Leo? I heard you say there's some lenses in here. Well, there are. They're cleverly hidden in the handle of the device. So I'll, I'll show you. There's two lenses in this particular kit. Here is a wide-angle lens. It mounts right on there. And it mounts onto the case. There's a little um, ratcheted uh, hole on the case right here. And it mounts right onto this case. It's really simple. just goes right in there like that. And then uh, I'll show you. If I launch the camera... I'm going to get a really nice wide angle uh, shot. So let me show you. This is the this is the uh, what uh, the camera looks like uh, without the lens. And if I attach the lens, it's just a little bit it's a little bit wider. Um, pretty good quality. Edge to edge is uh, pretty clear. Now, but that's not the only lens. Watch. I'm going to show you. There's another lens hidden. Oh, oh, clever! This is a super wide angle or fisheye lens. I would guess it's about 12 millimeters uh, equivalent, and it is really wide. One of the advantages of a lens this wide is you can also get really, really close to that. And it's great because the iPhone can actually focus pretty well wherever you tap. So uh, this would be a great way for it. Let's say, for instance, you want to say, uh, let's see the, the uh, quality of the grid on this, something really, uh, really tight. If I tap it, it focuses on it, exposes for it, and you can see it's able to get quite close. So this is both a fisheye and a macro. And it'll get a pretty wide-angle uh, shot. Um, the two lenses and the handle uh, total $200 uh, and the case. Um, I'll tell you, the biggest negative on the case is you're pretty much stuck with it because it's the devil to get off. So you better like the case an awful lot. Um, And it isn't exactly the most elegant uh, case I've ever seen. But, it, you know, it'll protect the phone a little bit. And it does, it does leave you room for connecting uh, cables like this mic. So there it is. That's the iPro Lens, $200 from iPro Lens. Remember, all the videos for all of these products, including uh, full videos uh, for uh, some of the things we didn't get to the full videos uh, for, available on YouTube.com slash Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. And remember to watch before you buy. Bye-bye.